Hello and welcome. I hope you can hear me. Today I want to create a new dub techno track from start to uh, I hope finish. And I plan to use mostly sounds from a sound set that I was part of creating. Um, and it was released by Luftwurm. Um, and so most sounds will be from that sound pack. Um, so let me share the screen. Uh, also, we can first say hello to Neptune. Hello. Yeah, Neptune is also there. So, um, ah, let's say hello to a few people here. So we have the usual suspects in the chat. Very nice. Um, yeah, very happy to see you. Uh, it's a bit stupid. I need to look here to take a look into the camera. Um, so I hope you don't mind if I just look at my screen. Um, by the way, I have uh, some nice tea um, that uh, Sutanda bought me and brought to my gig in Eindhoven. Thank you very much. It's um, um, it's um, a very interesting flavor with some different cherry um, stuff in. So I think it's very nice suited for, for the weather we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right, so I would suggest that I just start to, to make some music um, and then after a while take a look at the chat and then answer some of your questions. So um, when we do dub techno music, we first need to have um, some, some drums, maybe a kick drum, uh, and I already loaded that 808 kick drum inside my Ableton drum rack. It's um, just a sample from, I think, samples from Mars. Yeah. Um, it has a rather long tail, so there are other 808 kicks with a rather short tail, maybe like, like this one here. It's more like a click, I think, but I prefer to have something with a more low-end tail. Um, and what I usually do to create a sub bass from the same sound is that I copy that um, that sample to to the next slot. And here I do a few things. First thing is that I close the filter so that I only have the the low frequencies. It would also be interesting to um, have the EQ8 here to just see the frequencies. So you see the kick drum has some, some high end here and the low end, uh, the, the sub bass sound is limited to frequencies around 500 hertz. And it's like I said, the same sample. Then I also use the fade in function to remove the transients. So we have the kick drum here with a very aggressive punch and here we have just the the tail without we, we could also do do it like this just take the the start point to somewhere here but then we maybe have a click due to the uh, shape <laughs> nature of this one but um, so I, I just use the fade in function here All right, and then I, it's also possible to just copy that one again and tune it to a different pitch. Maybe five semitones down. That would be um, a fourth note. I hope that this is actually um, audible on YouTube because it's very deep frequencies that we, we have here. So what, what do we have? We have this sub bass sound here and we also have the kick drum. Um, and then it would be possible to just lay down a few notes. Um, I switch the metronome on. Um, of course we need the four on the floor kick. And record something like that. Oh, 
I'm not sure why I don't have the kick drum here. Yeah, I think that is already a nice um, starting point. Mm. Um, I need the T here. Um, so let's move to some sounds from, from Diva. Um, and I first want to have some atmospheric background sound and I created a few sounds. Where are they? They should be labeled as C for soundscape. Yeah, that's really nice. It's called uh, One Note Orchestra. And it says minor here, which means that it already has a minor chord with three um, with uh, oh Josh says no stream just picture here I'm not sure is that a problem with everyone or is it technically working fine I'm not sure uh, I'm not getting any error messages here in my YouTube dashboard so Josh please let me know if it's a problem with everyone Refresh doesn't work. All right. Um, does it work for anyone else? Or is it a problem on on yours end? Please let me know. So um, that one is uh, a sound that already has like three notes from the um, working fine in Wuppertal. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, so uh, we have uh, already three notes. If you want to have a different chord, you can load the same sound without the minor stuff. And then you have only one note, so you could play different different chords. But in this case, I want to use um, that one. So let me lay down a few bars here. Maybe eight bars. And the quantization is also on. So where was I? Yeah, that's good. With some background textures like that, it's very important to have a little bit of sidechain compression going on, which means that each kick drum will mute the the sound um, a little bit. So in order to achieve that, I just took the stock plugin from, from Ableton and you have to click on this little triangle here to open that section. And then you can click here on sidechain. Um, and then it says audio from and my kick drum is here on the drum rack maybe I should uh, label that a little bit drums or maybe uh, kick and sub and here on the first slot I should also label that kick because now in this channel I can pick the channel first kick sub and then I can click here on kick drum pre-effects pre if x um, and then you already see that the kick drum is giving us um, this little waveform here and then I just drag down the threshold up to the moment where I start that something happens the the orange line is giving us the amount of gain reduction so usually that works best with the ratio on, on full which would be a limiter and then you can play a little bit with with the attack and release when the release is too long 
the pumping effect is not happening because then the compressor does not have the time to get back to zero. So it should always be possible for the signal um, that to, to get back to zero. Not sure if I explained that in a way uh, that you can actually understand what I'm saying. Um, so we have some little side chaining, but not too much. I think that's fine. Then we should take care of the first um, kind of chord sound. And I made a few of these. Um, by the way, my, my sounds always have a very uh, simple name, so I, I didn't I did, I, did, uh, I did not come up with fancy names, instead they're called like what they are, like um, basic or basic 2 or basic 3 or band pass. So they're just giving you what you actually hear. So let me try this one first, I think it works fine. Yeah, I think this is nice. So what I did here is um, the sound uses, like the name tells you, a band pass filter. And I also modulated the speed of the LFO. So the change of the filter frequency is not in the same speed all the time. Instead, it's moving faster and, and slower all the time. Yeah, that's nice. So, um, I will now record a pattern. Uh, let me record it first and then I explain what I did here. So, because I just have have had an idea. Um, maybe it would also be nice to move to that slot. Yeah, that's nice. All right. I played basically the same chord all the time. So this is just an E. By the way, we are in E minor, just for the people who, who would like to know. And here I played um, also a B minor, which is a fourth below the E minor. And remember that I did the same thing here with my two sub bass sounds. They're also um, a fourth note apart. So it would be not a good idea to have a fifth in the bass and then the fourth in the chords. So I'm always trying to match the the chord scheme from from the sub bass and from from uh, from the chords. You know, so that we have um, not a dissonant uh, thing going on. By the way, it is questionable. If it's okay to use two different chords and still have that one going on the same chord all the time. Um, let me just see something. No, that is... This is that. Um, Ah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's dissonant or not to have two different chords 
on channel 3 and the same background texture with only one chord on channel 2. I will just leave it for a while and determine later if I like that or not. Yeah, I will just leave it for a while. Maybe I can start the track with that background texture and then mute it or something. So let's try to find another sound and I want to have another chord. Let's see what... Um, it has been a while since I created these sounds, so... I think that's great. Yeah, let me see how it sounds together. Yeah, that's working very well. Let's record it. That sound is one of a few sounds where I made some patterns by cascading the LFOs because um, Diva doesn't really have an arpeggiator with a chord function, but I used some nasty tricks to yeah, create some patterns. So you can hold a note for a while and get this nice rhythmic pattern. The Metrals asked, is their first back preset as well? Nice not to the man. Yeah, that preset was created by Luftrum, so it's not by Mr. Fürstenberg. It also, let me just play it for, um, for you. So this is that sound. Where was I? My, no, that was the other one. Yeah, so uh, that is my, my kind of um, little pattern patch that I created, one of the three patterns I made, and um, I'm not pressing it and, and uh, for a long time, but uh, just throwing it in for, for a few sounds here and there. Um, yeah, I think that works well together. When I arrange this kind of music, I always try not to make it too crowded so when you take a look let me change the color of the clip when you take a look at both of them at the same time you see that this second sound is um, always playing when the other sound is not playing so we, we have this one here and that one um, and I always try to have them not at the same time, you see, because if you have a lot of sounds playing at the same time, it, it kills the mix and sounds very, um, very muddy, I, I think. So, yeah, that's my, my idea. Let's label everything. And save. I also like that we have a new save button here on Able and Push. By the way, push three is uh, still a bug fest. Um, yeah, I bought it. I only have the the standard version without the building computer, um, but I really like it. The pads are fantastic, and um, so I'm I started to use it really as a centerpiece also for entering notes. I think the first time since I ever made music that I didn't have a full-size keyboard in front of me. It's still here. You can see it on the camera. I have my um, one of our keyboards here to the right but yeah i really like the the push three at the moment
All right, so I think it's time for some, some more drums. And we also have something here in, in Diva. There are a few drum sounds as well. We, they are labeled, I think, DR, drum. Um, there, I want a hi-hat. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I have to kill the delay. I'm very sorry, Sören, for killing your nice delay. Uh, speed, speed limit, uh, 124. Yeah. That's right. So um, let's do the, the very simple thing with the uh, offbeat hi-hat first. And then to make it a bit more groovy, I take another channel. Usually I would do this in a drum rack with samples, but since I want to show you the nice sounds that we created for the sound set, um, I want to do it on, on separate tracks. So let me pick uh, the same hi-hat sound again. But this time, I will increase the um, the attack of the amp so that it sounds more like a shaker, you know? So we have this one here and more of the, the shaker feel here. Also, maybe I change... Yeah, it's a high-pass filter, so I make it a bit higher. Um, and we need to reduce the volume a little bit um, and then I mean the the hi-hat was here that was the original hi-hat pattern and what I do now is that I copy these um, on the other uh, beats Schläger and then I have this kind of shaker feel this sounds almost like a house. That's not okay. I need to reduce it a little bit by deleting some of these. Yeah, I think that's better. And then I always like to have a sound that is on the two and the four of the beat. And I think um, that there is something here that... That I like. There is something called dark matter. It should be a snare. I think... No, that's not what I was looking for. Um, yeah, that's nice. So um, I think this is cool on the two and four. that I don't like this progression going from from E to B um, happening so often so I will move this one back up so that I have only one of these changes of the chords uh, 
in every eight bars. I think it's it's giving the track a bit more stability. I don't want to have this chord progression. Um, I don't like it right now because the problem is still that we have this E minor texture all the time. And if we have A, uh, B minor, um, then we have a dissonant thing going on because E minor has E, G and B and B minor has B, D and F sharp. And so this is dissonant because you have the F sharp against the G. Uh, you also have the D against the E. Uh, that's not cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this. But what I could do is maybe move it down in whole octave. So let's see how that sounds. I'm soloing that sound. Yeah, that's good. So we have some variation, but it's still the same chord. Neptune's still sleeping. Yeah. Neptune likes dub techno music. So, of course. So, what else could we throw in here? Um, maybe a third and last chord, but I think it needs to be a very short one because we already have two, uh, two sounds, um, two chords playing all the time. Uh, and so we don't want to kill the mix with something that is too too long so let me take a look if i have some some shorter sounds here that is obviously not short that's nice didn't we use that before let me see no by the way, these are all sounds that I contributed to that sound set. There are also sounds from Martin on Static and from Ohrwert and also from Luftrum. So four sound designers worked on that. What is hypnotic? Interesting. Okay, so... So, let's see if we find some spots for, for that one. It actually helps to look at the pattern to find the spots that are still empty. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, Ableton does not let me uh, look at this track and record that one at the same time because it instantly switches to... Yeah, that's stupid. But we still have ears, so I think it's fine. Let's record something. Oh, 
the other one should be playing as well. Um, look at both of them at the same time yeah so the blue one is the sound that I just recorded and the white one is the the older pattern so they're not overlapping Ah, Zone arrived in the chat. Hello, Luftrum. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Zone mentioned already that, that this sound that I made um, uh, that this one is his favorite sound of the sound set. <laughs> Yeah, it's not bad, I guess. Someone was talking about CPU consumption. Um, I will just close my... No, I can't. Let me just move that down a little bit. Um, six. So right now, with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, with, with uh, 8 instances of D.Va running... I'm just at roughly 15 to 20 percent CPU usage in Ableton, um, and this is the the base model M1 Mac that I have. I bought this when it was released, I think two years ago. So this is like the M1 standard. No Max, no Ultra, not M2. It's just the plain simple m1 um, and i believe that i have diva in i'm not sure what kind of mode is it i mean i could activate this multi-core mode i'm not really sure why it's not activated on uh, by default let me see if it changes something about the um, cpu usage not really I'm not sure what this multi-core button actually does because the CPU usage is the same right now with all these multi-core buttons switched on. I've no idea what this is supposed to do. There is this setting with the accuracy. You can do it from... You can change it here, but I always have it on, on the default setting, so that works works for me. All right, so um, I would suggest that I do a quick break and go, go through some of your questions. Um, and then after that, I will um, I will go to, uh, to arranging this thing. All right, so I hope you, we can see the chat here now. Is it possible that we have the chat uh, this is very confusing. Yeah, that should work. All right, so if you have any questions for me to answer, please let me just go through them. Um, I think these are only from the last, like, 20 to 30 minutes. So if you have any questions that have been asked before that, what you're reading right now, um, please ask them again. I'm sorry, I have no idea how to uh, go back back in time. Mm. <clears throat> yes, 
Yeah, I must say um, about this one. Um, I mean, it's a bit strange to talk about this because I also released a set there. But uh, from my point of view, the Luftrum sound sets are very, very good. Um, I'm using the sounds for for the Valve Iridium a lot, and also for Omnisphere and also Zebra. There are a lot of great sound packs there. So um, I wouldn't like advertise on this if I was not absolutely convinced that these are fantastic sounds. Um, yeah. So oh, where's the chat window here is it um could you please make a tutorial how to do such stuff to techno presets in diva yeah that would be something um definitely happening in another session um today i just want to work with the presets that i already did but i will do another live stream where i construct some new patches from scratch i think that's um something I, I could do. Um, that sounds really nice. Thank you. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Nice stereo image. Yeah, that the thing is, uh, I, I was not doing any mixing yet. So these are just all the presets just from Diva with the internal effects of Diva as well. So um, that speaks for the quality of, of that software synthesizer. Mm, dub is minimal. Yeah, there are of course a lot of different ways to do dub techno music, but when I do it, I always try to find a very minimal and atmospheric approach to, to that music. Mm, dub is swamped in processing. That's also true. I think it's like two things at the same time. It's the same like with ambient music. Also, ambient music is very focused on, on the sound textures and on the effects. But once you, you have achieved a certain like soundscape, it doesn't change too much. So I think these are two, two genres that have a lot of uh, things in common. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, hardware, software, always an interesting discussion. Um, obviously, I'm also working a lot with hardware, but I also like to work with software. Uh, for me, it's both equally interesting um, and rewarding to to work with mm. <laughs> yeah that's true interesting to see that the placement of one or two notes can change the vibe entirely that is exactly the idea the placement of the notes is very very important with this kind of sounds um, and and some people mentioned already that the mix is already good um, i didn't mix anything so here you can see that it's mostly coming from the arrangement so if you have a good arrangement then you don't need to spend so much time on mixing if you start to to overlap sounds of course you then need to eq the hell out of all the tracks but if you have some some good placement or arrangement uh, then it's not really necessary to to do some like surgical mixing mm. oh uh, which scent would you advise to get for an edition of a solo Wild of M? That is a very uh, tough question. Um, I must say that that I don't really want to give any advice on what to buy because I believe that you can do like almost all kind of music with any synthesizer, seriously. Um, I mean, there are of course some some very special like one trick ponies like uh, TB303 that have like very limited capabilities, but not not really sure. It could be a software synthesizer like Pigments. It's very versatile, or something like Diva. There could be like a lot of different options. Yeah, CPU. Um, like I said, fine on here on my end. I hope it's um also fine with other computers. <laughs> uh, why do you choose Ableton? Um, simply because when I started making music, I I use Cubase. And then when I started to play live and go live on stage, which was around 2006, there was no alternative to Ableton to really perform music live on stage. And so I started using Ableton in 2006. Is that true? Yeah, 2006. And um, I'm so used to Ableton that I really know it like, like nothing else. So whatever I want to do, I can just quickly do it with Ableton. So um, I don't think that Ableton is better than other DAWs. Um, but it always is important that you know your door very, very well. And if you do so, it really doesn't matter if you use this one or that one, I think. Mm. 
Yeah, Bitwig or Reason. I used Reason um, also in, in the early 2000, I think around 2000 or 2002 or so, I used Reason a lot. But um, at the time, it was not possible to record audio. So I always struggled between using Cubase and Reason at the same time. And so at some point, I just quit with, with Reason. Mm. CPU issues? No, 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 no CPU issues. Mm. What do you like the most about life? That is a very good question. I think I like most the integration with this hardware controller because when I make music, I can access the, the mixer stuff. Um, I can access devices and um, that's something I really like. Also, I like that the, the design is very minimal. So all the devices that are built in, like the drum rack um, or some of the synthesizers, they have a very minimalistic layout and design and you can always very quickly do what you want because uh, for me this is like a tool where I need to to immediately um, get the ideas that I have in my head into sound um, and, and this is happening um, very fast for me with Ableton so this is what, what I like about it. Hello to Japan, that's fantastic um, to have you here from from the other end of the world. That's so cool. Thank you for, for joining in tonight. Mm. Normally, how many chords do you use? With dub techno music, uh, one, one chord, <laughs> maybe two, but, but not more. I think that's... Uh, Zebra on CPU uh, also depends on, on the complexity of the patches because Zebra has a very modular way of doing sounds and you can also kill the CPU by using a lot of modules. But if you have, like most sounds are, are quite okay. It's also very old. I mean, Zebra is like 10 years old or so. So computers were not that powerful that time. Mm. The dotted delay question is: uh, We can do. We can talk about effects later. Let me um, just continue, um, and uh, then we talk about delays because I also want to show you some techniques with with delays that I like to to do. Um, will this video be posted on your channel, or do you think it will be taken down? No, no, no. My live streams are not unlist. Why do you think they are unlisted? Uh, YouTube um, has a nice way of hiding live streams, but they are still there. If you go to the channel, you have to click on videos and then there is live stream next to it. And there you can access the live stream. Uh, change from top chat to live chat. Ah, okay, all right. Okay, so... Oh, can you recommend some good dub techno albums that sound a bit like your music? No, actually not. I'm, uh, it's, it might sound a bit stupid, but I'm not really listening to dub techno music. On my free time. I'm very sorry, that sounds a bit uh, maybe arrogant, but um, that's not really what I listen to. Um, I like to do this kind of music, but I can't really tell you any advice on, on what's good. All right, so let me close the chat um, for a while, and now I will try to do an arrangement here because we want to have a track and now we have all the elements there that we that we need so um, let me label these ones because otherwise we will have a mess in the arrangement later Okay, so how do we do that? Let's copy the texture thing here first. Of course, there are like millions of ways of doing that. You could um, try to, to make like a chain here with the scenes um, or just record everything live. But um, let me just do it uh, the old fashioned way of putting everything here in here one by one.
one could be maybe that one. Yeah, that's nice. Um, when I start a track, I always want to tell the listener within the first few seconds what kind of music he's, he or she or whatever is going to expect. So, um, with having the texture and some chords at the beginning, you immediately know that we are going to listen to a track that is very atmospheric. And it's also probably going to be a dub techno um, thing because of these sounds. So with these first two sounds, I'm already telling what are we going to what are we going to have. Um, if I did something else like this, maybe for for the beginning of the track. Then it could also be possible that we have a deep house track or something completely different. But with this beginning, everyone exactly knows, I think, after three seconds, ah, that's a very atmospheric dub techno track. So this is an idea I find very important when I um, arrange something. Okay, so let's do it like maybe two rounds, 16, 16 bars. And to make it more interesting, we could also put one of these sounds somewhere here, like in a more random position. Or maybe here, right before the before the beat kicks in. Yeah, that's nice. So um, I'm using this sound only only once. And here I want to have some more delays. So I'm picking my, um, my Valhalla delay and put it to an eighth note dotted. And we have a lot of feedback, so we have a lot of repetitions of that sound. Let's see how it sounds. Yeah, that's cool. I always want to have some reverb after the delay, so I'm taking my standard preset um, from Valhalla Vintage Verb. It's a bit too loud, so I will bring down the volume. I'm not touching the fader here because I will later do mixing. And then the, um, the ratio between the volumes is still, will still be good. Even if I change the volume here. Um, let's see. doing stuff. Um, please keep in mind that I'm also streaming and recording the camera stuff on the same computer.
Yeah, I think at that point I want this texture to be a bit quieter. So I just adjusted the level to what I want to have here um, and open this automation thing here and then at the beginning I put it back to zero so this slowly fading out so at the beginning it's it's very loud and by the course of the next minute it will slowly fade out and give the chords a bit more space yeah mark that's correct um especially since obs supports the m1 mac um it was not possible to do on on the old version, but now it's optimized for um, for this. Yeah, Steam Steam Deck. I never had a Stream Deck. Um, maybe I I want one, but there's already so much stuff on the table that I'm not really sure if, if I like it. <laughs> yeah. So after I think eight bars, after sixteen bars, this chord thing snug in and mm, and I think after one and a half minute it would be okay to add some hi-hats and before immediately before the hi-hat kicks in I want to remove the kick drum and here I'm doing something um, I'm copying that kick drum here again and I add a high pass filter like this so instead of automating an actual filter I'm just creating a new clip no no what's that called it's not a clip it's um a sound here in the drum rack and then i move these up to to that high pass kick drum and so i have a little break without the hassle of automating a lot of stuff let's listen to it for for the whole phrase <laughs> After 16 bars, we could have a variation. So what I did here is I just um, put the cursor to that point and hit Command E to separate these two clips from each other. And then I could mute a few of these sounds, a few of these notes. By the way, I, I like to mute notes instead of deleting them so when you hit zero you can just uh, mute a sound and then you can easily activate them if you delete them they are gone and then it's hard to uh, get them back so Yeah, and there we could bring in the third one. So the idea here is to give the new sound a bit more space. 
by deleting a few nodes from the sounds that are already there. If you layer more stuff on top of each other, the arrangement has the problem, the tendency to, to just explode. But if you want to, um, if you want to um, add a new sound, it can be a good idea to remove some elements that have been there before to give that more more space. Ah, we still have the, the extreme setting on the delay here. I think I should bring that down. Mm. And also the mix. Now we have a problem that always happens when you create a track out of some patterns. You brought in all the elements and the track is running and everything's just playing. So there are different ways of, um, of, um, of solving this problem. Um, and one of them would be to, to create a break. And after the break, start again from, from scratch. So. Uh, what I will now do is try to create a little break. So we have this one running here for 16 bars. So I think here should be the point where my my break starts. So first I will mute the kick drum or use my, my high pass kick that I already created in, in a few minutes ago. And also I want to delete the hi-hats. Maybe this is a bit too harsh to just cut them, so I will leave them here, but use a utility to fade them out. The question is, uh, why do I use a utility and not the, the main volume? Simply because I have now this fade out here, um, and I can still change the level. So when I mix this track later, I can still change the volume and if I automated the volume here for this fade out, I would need to change the automation curve. And this is a very tedious thing to do. So um, yeah, let's see how that sounds. Yeah, I think it's more natural. And also, after four bars, I will leave it. Okay. Yeah, now we could do some some stuff with um, some stuff with 
Uh, where is it? Um, hello. There it is. So what I want to do now is I want to have some very overdrive kind of um, tape delay stuff going on. So let me throw this on this chord sound here. Yeah. Mm. So what happens here is that in the break I will bring in this very oversaturated tape delay sound. just for for the break Yeah, I think this is cool. Also, I would do the same thing here with the other sound down here. So let's first increase um, the level of the delay and then the feedback rate. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I muted the texture for a while, so... Um... Is that better? <laughs> I moved the screen uh, to the top left on request. Yeah, let me quickly recap what I did here. I 
faded out the hi-hats in the break and I also first um, put the kick in this high pass filter mode um, and then I uh, brought in a lot of heavy delay stuff with a lot of feedback and modulated this a little bit and then after a little break I got back to the beat but only with one of the chords so we have a very full arrangement here with all the sounds playing that are in the track so far and here we have uh, the break and then we start again only with some some sounds so let me play this in in the context again for you I think that's, that works. Mm. After the break, I introduced the snare sound that I did not use before, because I think that after the break, it's okay to, to reuse everything that you introduced before, but it's also interesting to have at least one new element to, to the party. Mm. So after these automations, I need to bring back the utility to zero so that we can actually use the sounds again uh, and after a while um, I also can get rid of these delays here so that was around here and the feedback was 20 some honking going on outside. I'm not sure if you can hear it over the microphone. All right, in the break, I want to have another pet sound because it's nice to just remove everything and have these delays going on. But also I want to accentuate this feeling of having the break by having another pet sound. So let's take a look of what we have here. There are a lot of pads. I think we are on the very lower octave range here. Ah, that could be nice. Of course, it's important to listen to that sound in the context of what you're actually doing. of resonance probably um.
That's a bit too sharp. Um, that's nice. But I hear some stuff going on in the very low frequencies, so I'm taking an EQ8 and removing these sounds because we only want this airy, high frequency stuff going on. And I also want some more reverb on this. And also, I want to copy the side chain. Ah, oh, that doesn't make sense because we don't have a kick drum. Yeah, good morning. Oh, now something bad happened. Ah, I'm on the wrong channel. Yeah, let's record this. Yeah, that worked. Fine, 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 fine. Mm. What kind of sound was that, by the way? Uh huh. By the from. All right. So we have at least one sound from the master himself in this arrangement here. Mm. Okay. So I think we can now get back to the other elements a bit quicker than before. So here starts everything again. say I like this reduced version of the chords that I created here much better. Maybe I use the same thing here. Yeah, that's much better. I also copy it to, to the beginning. a mistake um, by copying that um, also the settings of um, 
of the uh, effects were copied as well. So let me delete this. Uh, the cat is over here. By the way, someone asked where the cat is. It's right here. <laughs> Neptune is just sleeping. I think it's time for bringing this track to, to an end. And if we do some math, we have 16 bars here and then the chords start and maybe after 32 bars, we could have another break or is that too fast? No, it's like one and a half minutes. I think it's okay. So this time I do it a bit different, um, a bit faster. I will think make an eight bar, eight bar break. Oh, let's do sixteen bars. So I separate this here. Um, And this time I will leave the hi-hats and everything there and do the stuff with the delay and feedback. We could be lazy and copy what we did in the first break. It always works. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not very creative, but maybe... Where is the feedback here? That is not very creative, but since uh, you want to see some results here on the stream soon, I will just try to duplicate the settings from the delay that we had in the last break. No, that's stupid. I will just do it. Uh, ah, let's use, actually, I can do it here with my little uh, controller. So let me just group this. Wait, this is a bit stupid. Wait, no. No, wait, wait. That was too fast. Um, Let me delete all the stuff that I don't want to automate so that I have the delay and the mix here right in front of me um, and then I will just do it um, what happened here mix and feedback so I'm just um, tweaking it live on the go that usually works best to use the ears so I need to I hope I get this right I need to activate this automate thing and also this plus thing and I think when I then hit record yeah then I can change uh, the settings here so I will I muted the other sound here the other chord sound and I will now play through this break 
and tweak it live on the push controller. trim comes in and the break ends I want this sounds to mute That's very nice. Now the same thing should happen with the other sound. Mm. Yeah, first I need to delete what we already have here in the automation. And then do the same thing with the other sound. What's the difference between these two, by the way? Uh, uh -huh. All right. Oh, that's a bit too early. Let's go somewhere here. Due to the high amount of feedback in the delay plugins, the sounds get a bit louder and I want to compensate for that with a utility plugin. the same thing to the other channel. And I want to have my pet break break pad whatever also here in the second break mm, but this oh, it's very loud I don't think that it should be so loud mm. let's be a bit more subtle here and decrease the volume it's always important to Text. Mm. 
Yeah, that's much better. is going to be faded out slowly. want to fade, fade the kick drum out. Mm, by the way, this one is doing exactly nothing, so I can delete it. Mm, the kick drum and the sub bass. Ah, now nah, that's another trick I want to show you. Um, for the, like the coda, the part before the track eventually comes to an end, I will mute the sub bass so that after, so here in the break we have the muted kick drum and still the sub bass and then we only have the kick drum without the sub bass at the end. So this is maybe the, the point where a lot of listeners start to realize that there was a sub bass just because it's missing now you get an interesting feeling here. And after that I fade out the kick drum. And then I take a utility on the master to fade out the little bit that's left here. So let's listen to the whole end part again. Alright, I will now play this whole thing from start to finish to see and hear the result of what's, um, what was happening here in the last... Oh, one hour and a half. Fantastic. Um, there is no mixing and no mastering being done yet. Uh, I also believe that stuff like that should not be achieved in like just a few seconds, <laughs> it should be uh, something that you take care of um, after a while. So it's a good idea to make your music and after that leave it for a day or two and then get back to it and mix and master it. It should not be done on the same session. Thank you, Nate, for telling me that chord 3 is muted. Yeah, I just noticed. Thank you. I hope it will be fine uh, in, the, in the end result. Okay, so I will play this thing through again and then quickly get back to your questions and then I can finally uh, call it a, a night here. All right.
let's start from the beginning.
Yeah. Oh, what happened here? Uh, Yeah. Okay, so I think that was um that was it for tonight. Um maybe uh let me do a few final thoughts on this. Mm, you see that you don't necessarily need to use a lot of sounds or a hell of a complex arrangement to, to make music. At least this is my philosophy of doing music. So if you want to make music that sounds like my music, try to keep it simple. There are just a few elements here. The, the drums are four channels and then we have two background pads and textures and and three layers of, of chords. So this this is like everything I, I used in this track. There would be room for, for improvement here by having more subtle elements like little noises and, and stuff that just fly in and out from, from time to time to make it more interesting. And it also would be possible to, to modulate some of these delay effects from time to time to, to create some variation. But I think they're the main thing here with this rather simple arrangement is already working from from my point of view let me go to through your questions from the last couple of minutes um someone told me to go on live chat to browse more back in time yeah that works thank you for for that tip um oh no it's still just uh up to a certain point so yeah i noticed um hi state zero by the way nice to, to meet you um we have a discussion here about a hardware and software. Yeah, I don't want to go into that now. Um, I, as you can see, have a lot of hardware and I also like to use software and it's always going back and forth all the time. I think the, the more important question is the, the workflow thing. For me, hardware has a more immediate workflow thing. If I create a live set and play music live, then... I quickly can access a lot of stuff by having all these knobs in front of me. And with software, it's it's more difficult. You have a hardware controller, of course, but you can only access one device at a time. So increasing a filter frequency on the one synth and decreasing it on another synth, you have to prepare for stuff like that with software. And if I do it spontaneously, I don't know what I am going to control later. So. For me, hardware brings in a lot more flexibility in terms of playing live and um, it has a more immediate approach of making music. So that's what I like. But from the sound perspective, no, I, I don't hear a difference. I made a very uh, thorough comparison between the Profit, my, my hardware Profit and different plugins like the SoftTube and also the Repro 5. And I was not able to to hear difference. I was able to tune in all the sounds exactly the same on the software and the hardware. And I swear to you, no one would have been able to distinguish the software from the hardware. No chance at all. I tried to record a video, but then I noticed that a lot of people already recorded videos on the profit plugins versus hardware thing. So I, I skipped it. Yeah, but from, from the sound perspective, I don't see any difference between hard and software um, in these days. I'm very sorry. Um, yeah, we had a lot of uh, noises that was not um, clipping. I think it was from the uh, CPU stuff. It worked fine at the beginning, but now I have some CPU issues. Keep in mind that I'm using the same computer for making music and streaming uh at the same time so i think this is the the problem um right now mm. 
Live review asks if aliens are holding you hostage and making you compose techno. Blink at the camera. No, I'm I'm doing this on purpose. Um, um. I think the same person wanted to know why I just started making techno music. Uh, where is that one? Yeah, not really sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing techno and, and other music from time to time. I know back in the days, if you take a look at my YouTube channel and watch the videos from around 2012 to 2014, it was like all about techno and dub techno music. And I have developed a, a very strong um, uh, love for ambient music, of course, but I still like to do other atmospheric music um like dub techno so yeah this is still um still something i i like to do a lot yeah um i'm going up and down but i actually can't really grasp what you all wrote because i'm working very focused on on this track for for the last almost two hours um so i think i will close this stream now uh, thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, yeah, and Pat will do a country and western thing. That's good. Mm. Always good to to emphasize uh, to to explore other genres. I think it's very important. I'm not really saying it as a joke. I mean, I I do a lot of music that you would never want to listen to just because I want to understand how that music is made. I I created some some hardcore techno, drum and bass, uh, goa trance, just for for the sake of of knowing how how it's being done. So if you um, if you really uh, want to create country or western music. Um, it's, I think, a very good idea. Uh, what tea do you like most? Very important question. Um, today I had a tea from my dear friend Sudhanva, who is also in the chat. Uh, he get, he passed it to me um, uh, in Eindhoven when I played there. Uh, and it was a, a very tasteful, um, I think, a green tea with also some, some cherry and other uh, fruit um, stuff inside. But usually I drink um, Darjeeling or black tea from, from Nepal. That's my, my favorite tea um yeah so i hope you enjoyed the session if you like the sounds that i used today there's a link in the description of that video where you can uh, take a look and decide if you want to to get these patches um, so yeah thank